in the Adirondacks, sometimes a season arrives with a flourish. You wake up one morning in November and there's a foot of snow and it's zero degrees. Winter has arrived. Sometimes, however, the transition goes slowly. The season can linger. That's how it was in the fall of 2021. We had some snow, but a southern storm in mid-December brought warm temperatures and high winds, and fall returned. I was planning a multi-night backpacking trip in the Feral Lake wilderness, expecting winter. That would mean towing my bulky winter gear behind me in a sled. But the conditions changed. This would be a fall trip. Late fall, to be sure, the expected overnight temperatures in the upper teens would push the limits of my three-season gear, but it was doable. Photographers are always looking for the light you get in the golden hour. That's the first hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset. In mid-December, the sun is so low in the sky that the golden hour lasts all day, which can create a different kind of problem. The hours of daylight are short at this time of year, and having lingered far too long taking pictures and enjoying the warm sun, I ended up well short of my destination as darkness closed in. I'd reduced my load by leaving my tent at home, and it struck me, as I searched for the lean-to where I'd planned on staying, that this might not have been a great idea. Even in the dark, you wouldn't expect a lean-to to be hard to find, but the one on Little Rock Pond eluded me. Maybe it's not there anymore. And it didn't really matter. I knew that nearby Rock Pond also has a lean-to, and that one was right where I expected it. I woke on the second day of the trip to spectacular clear skies and the sounds of howling ice. Under certain conditions, the ice will creak and moan, and it can sound quite eerie. phenomenon is caused by vibrations set in motion by the expansion or contraction of the ice. Variations in the distance and the ice thickness create the unexpected sounds. The Fair Lake Wilderness lies at the eastern edge of the Adirondack region, and it's a bit lower and drier than the central Adirondacks where I live. But the heavily glaciated terrain is sharp with ledges and open rock visible on the narrow ridges and summits. That open rock is mostly the result of intense fires that burned the area in the early 1900s. The topsoil was thin to begin with, and in places the fires burned down to the bedrock. The area was also extensively logged, but that logging took place in the early to mid 1800s. So with time, these forests have made a strong recovery. Stands of large hemlock and white pine are common, and the forest north of Farrow Lake is truly impressive. There are also stands with large hardwoods, including some of the biggest ash trees that I've seen in the Adirondacks. Sadly, both the ash and hemlock are seriously threatened by non-native insects. The emerald ash borer and the hemlock woolly attaglid are both nipping at the edges of the region, and it's probably just a matter of time before our Adirondack forest will once again be dramatically altered by the human asteroid. <laughs>